and welcome to Kirchi Crochet Hooks. Please enjoy our free tutorials with just one of a 24 part series on teaching you how to crochet. Subscribe to start receiving our 24 courses that are delivered to your email inbox every few days. By the time you're done, you'll know the ins and outs of crochet. And don't forget to follow us on Facebook and Twitter. So now let's get crocheting with Curtsy. Welcome to Curtsy Crochet Hooks. Today is lesson number one, and today I'm going to teach you how to sit properly. Now you may think to yourself, I got a favorite chair, Mikey, I don't need to worry about it, but I'm actually telling you that your chair absolutely matters when it comes to your comfort with crochet. You got to think your head's always down, so you got to think that if your head's always down, your body also has to be in a position that can accommodate that, so you don't have neck pain, arm pain, leg pain, or lower back pain after, your, after a good hard session of crochet. Now where do you put your yarn balls? I'm going to give you some tips on how to do that because that actually matters to your tension. And then finally I'm going to teach you how to hold the crochet hook and how to hold the yarn in your hand. That's coming up right today on lesson number one of Curtsy Crochet Hooks. A lot of us have our favorite couches to sit on, and in this case, this couch is actually really hard on my neck and my back and my legs. It's just because of my body angle. And I'm also finding, you know, it's natural to sit on the end of a couch, but the pillow is actually in the way of my arms so that I can't move it freely. Also, my the weight of my arms is actually making the stress on my neck. So what I'm gonna just do is move toward the center of the couch and shift my pillows underneath my elbows to give my arms support so that everything is being supported. But this is actually not fixing the back of my neck issues that I normally have. Because the couch is so plush, my butt actually automatically sinks really low in, and the bar at the front of the couch actually forces my knees up as well as the floor level itself. And so when I'm sitting there, my whole body is forming like a horseshoe, and when I go to look down toward my knees, it's actually a lot of pain pressure on the lower back. Here's in a, a different view of what's happening, is that the way the couch is, my butt is sinking lower than my knees, and therefore not keeping my body at a perfect angle in order to reduce the pain. It's also hard to resist, but you should try to avoid putting your feet up onto a coffee table because of the positioning of your lower legs and your back as well as your neck. This certainly looks comfortable, but it is extremely uncomfortable and hard on your legs, lower back, as well as neck. Because of the body sinking down into the couch and the elevation of your legs, it actually causes a lot of stress on the back of your neck, as well as your shoulders, as well as you're going to have some pains in your legs as soon as you're done crocheting. I'm about to sit on a chair that I prefer and the base is very solid but still very comfortable and it's keeping my butt and my legs at an even level which is a lot more easier. So I'm still looking down but my body is not being a lot of stress. However, I still have a neck problems because of the fact my arms are not being supported. It's a lot of weight to be sitting there for hours at a time, supporting the weight of your arms, supporting the weight of the project, and also crocheting and looking down at one time. But we can resolve this by one simple little step. I can crochet on this chair for hours. I just go to my couch, just grab some cushions and put them underneath my elbows. It's all about weight control. The pillows are now supporting the weight of my shoulders and my arms. The pillows are also pushing out my arms from my body to be more ergonomically correct. The project is actually just resting on my lap and the only thing I just need to do is hold it up with my wrist and just crochet as normal. And you can crochet like this for hours. It's actually very, very comfortable. Some people when they're first starting out, they realize that their arms are too low to their legs when they're starting to do their chain work or just starting their project. When you do afghans, after a while the afghan starts folding up on your lap and it actually pushes your hands higher up into your body, therefore making it more desirable. Don't be scared at any point to use a pillow underneath your project in order to support its weight and your arms and your shoulders when you're first starting. A lot of us like to watch TV as we're crocheting and that's not a bad thing, I do it all the time. The problem for me is that today's trending of glasses tends to be very thin, so when I look down I tend to look outside of my lenses so that I'm actually not using my glasses at all. You'll find yourself actually straining your eyes and making yourself extremely tired if not dizzy because what you're finding without even consciously thinking about it is that you're looking through your bare eyes instead of your glasses. What you can do over time is just shift down your glasses just slightly on your nose so that you don't have to move your head as much so that you can see your work as well as actually see the TV at the same time.
When using yarn, I actually like to pull my yarn out from the center of the ball. It actually reduces tension a lot because after you get to a certain point, there's absolutely no friction coming out of the center. And all you just need to do is just pull out a chunk and then just wind down and find the actual edge. And usually the crochet goes so fast that that piece of extra yarn that you've just pulled out of the center will actually get absorbed into your project really quickly so you don't have to worry about being a mess all over the place. What I find the best body position and for the yarn position to be is to have the yarn so it's directly working right into your project. Don't have it dragging across the floor or any other friction points. You want the friction to be as low as possible and coming right from the yarn ball right into your work will help you control your tension and make your stitches look a lot more consistent as you work through your project. Try not letting your yarn balls hit the floor just like so. Though the urethane finish of the armrest is really smooth and soft, just that 90 degree turn of the yarn actually adds friction. And you can see the ball is jumping up and down, which is causing more friction into my project than we probably would prefer. Try to put your yarn not right beside you just like so. Because the yarn is freshly coming out of the ball, you're going to notice that there's going to be extra tension because there's not enough distance for it to really relax and, and really work well with you. And you can see just by sitting beside me that you can see that it's pulling it back and wanting to fight with me as I'm crocheting. Try to avoid your yarn going over an armrest just like so. The actual fabric of this couch versus the fabric of the yarn is actually creating a lot more tension and as you can see it's about to fall off and into the crack of the couch. If you're going to sit on the couch, why not use in the armrest actually as to support your yarn. Therefore it's nice and equal level to your arms and you will find that you can monitor it a lot carefully when it's sitting right beside you just like so. If you're going to work with yarn balls, they're very difficult to control and you want to be able to control them as much as possible. You're going to notice that they're going to roll either off the couch or into the back of the couch. Sometimes they roll between the creases of the couch and adding extra tension to your work without you really even noticing it. So we have a solution to be able to avoid that. To avoid the tension, just go to the kitchen and get yourself a bowl and put the ball inside the bowl and you will find as you're crocheting the ball will rotate freely inside the bowl and therefore you can control it. It will never leave its location and just continually rotate as it needs to with virtually no friction at all. So let's review on how to hold your hook. This is a size 6.5 millimeter and this is a size K in US measurements. Now you notice that these hooks actually have a beautiful rounded edge on the tips and these are really more desirable than the ones that are flat. And you'll notice some that are very very sharp in this section over here and what happens when you try to pull those through it tends to snag onto the plies of the yarn. So these are more desirable than other types of hooks that are on the market. You also notice that there's a flat area within the middle of the hook down here. That's not just for the fancy danciness, that's actually to help stabilize your hand in order to understand the orientation without really having to look at it. In my methods that we're going to be learning in the 1 to 24 series is that some people actually hold their hook this way when they go to crochet. That's something that I've never become uh, comfortable with and I actually hold it the way that my mom showed me and I hold my hook like so. So your fingers and your thumbs are stabilizing on this flat area so that when you rotate and you rotate back and forth you know that it, when it's flat in your hand it's going to be either away from you or towards you but as you get more comfortable you're going to be able to understand where this hook is in your hands at all times just by uh, relying on this flat area of the hook. So let's begin on how to hold your yarn. Okay, so if you're left or right handed, doesn't really matter, it could be the same way. Hold your hand flat, you're going to open up your pinky just like so, you're going to feed it through over top of the three fingers. Now when I close my pinky and this finger together, there's actually really tight tension. If your fingers are like this, see how my finger, you see a gap? If I put a string there, there's actually going to be no tension at all because my fingers aren't closing together all the way. If that happens for you, all you need to do is just wrap it around your finger once like so and then you can worry about actually getting your tension. So let's uh, reposition my hands, open it up, put it across the top of the three fingers and then just bring your fingers together just like so and so if I had a piece of material in my hand then it would be these two fingers actually to hold it and how you're controlling your tension with yarn is that you're relying on this finger so you'll see it go in and out 
just like so and also your fingers here will close on and off as you need the tension so let's begin I just want to show you a quick sample in the next tutorial we're going to be teaching you how to chain so just like so I'm just going to put my fingers open put it across using my two fingers around and I'm going to hold the knot and then I'm going to begin to chain. So that will be in session number two where we learn how to chain and we understand the size of our hooks when it comes to the gauges. Well thank you for joining me for lesson number one of the Curtsy Crochet program and we're now going to schedule you to have lesson number two. In lesson number two we are going to be reviewing on how to hold your hook once again. We're also going to be teaching you two things. We're going to be teaching you the difference of crochet hook sizes. Does size matter? Absolutely. When it comes to your crochet hook sizes it absolutely matters 100%. We're also going to be teaching you how to chain with crochet to further your knowledge in the crochet program. We'll see you on lesson number two. Until next time, I'm your host, Mikey.